you heard the term COVID toes? Do you want to learn more about this phenomenon? Do you wonder how the skin is affected from COVID and how it may tie in with systemic manifestations? Do you wonder how age and sex differences or how ACE2 and renin angiotensin aldosterone system may play a role in COVID severity? Hello, my name is Jonathan Kappel. I'm a dermatologist and Mohs surgeon and a Mayo Clinic alumni. Myself, in addition to my fellow authors, Mark Kappel and David Weather, are honored and excited to share with you a small taste of our upcoming publication in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The article is entitled Hernio, in parentheses, chill blends, SARS-CoV-2, and COVID toes unified through cutaneous and systemic mechanisms. As we know, Pernio is erythema and swelling at acral sites typically triggered by cold. We wanted to do this paper because we had a previous robust experience with Pernio in 2011. We described over 100 patients with Pernio, possible associations, and proposed diagnostic criteria. The diagnostic criteria that we proposed in that paper were both major criteria where you needed both. Number one was localized erythema and swelling at acral sites, and number two was persistence for greater than 24 hours. Additionally, you needed one minor criteria. Number one was onset or worsening in cooler months. And number two was consistent histopathology. And number three was response to conservative warming treatment. As a reminder, the pathogenesis is thought to be due to type one interferon-mediated vasospasm. With that background, as well as anecdotes from the spring of 2020 from doctors all over the world of perneo-like acral eruptions, we heard the term pseudo chill blends, chill blend like, EM like, dyshydrosis like, acroschemia, and COVID toes. Because of this and our knowledge, we wanted to investigate further and hopefully be able to provide further insights regarding Pernio and how it related to COVID 19. Of course, our ultimate goal is to help clinicians and improve patient care. Pernio was one of the most common of many cutaneous manifestations of COVID. It was interestingly commonly in young, healthy patients with no cold exposure or history of pernia. Biopsies done were consistent with pernia. It revealed lichenoid, perivascular, periecrine inflammation. Additionally, there were reports of positive viral spike proteins on immunohistochemistry. It's interesting to and important to distinguish from vasculopathy in uh, where there's purpura or necrotic or ulcerated skin sites as opposed to the perniosis findings. Skin biopsy can distinguish between pernio and vasculopathy. Often uh, clinical symptoms and signs can be helpful as well. Pernio was more common in the asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic for patients from COVID, often with a robust interferon response, and vasculopathy was often a severely ill. As we know, COVID infection occurs through the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor or ACE2 but there may be more of a role of ACE2. Stay tuned. The renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or RAS, is also involved. Interestingly, the systemic RAS and ACE2 is also present in the skin. The balance of that axis may affect overall COVID severity as well as cutaneous manifestations. The balance between vasoconstriction, prothrombotic, and pro-inflammatory versus vasodilation, antithrombotic, and anti-inflammatory. As I mentioned before, interferon 1 response, a robust response, is present in pernio cases. Additionally, it's pr present in the pernio cases with COVID, and those patients are asymptomatic and more mildly symptomatic. Additionally, there are age and sex differences in COVID infection. It's thought that age-related immune and vascular differences may be influenced by sex, hormones, and genetics. And this may in turn affect susceptibility to viral entry, RAS system balance, as well as the interferon 1 response. In conclusion, we really hope you're excited for you to read this publication and hope you find it helpful, both for distinguishing pernia from other acral skin conditions, such as purpura of vasculopathy. Just a reminder, the criteria for pernia, the major and minor criteria, the pernia present in COVID patients is consistent with our previously proposed criteria because of the consistency of the skin biopsy on pathology. Finally, utilizing skin findings to potentially assist in diagnosis and prognosis and treatment of coded patients is ultimately what we're looking for here. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. 
If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mailclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.